So let's start this off. Um, have you played The Last of Us? Yes. It's been a while, but yeah, I have. Have you seen the show? I have not seen the show. So Do the you like the show? The show is, is crazy. So I never played the game. I think I tried playing the first mission, mm -hmm. but I... I I just couldn't get past that, so I I never finished it. So everyone still gets infected and zombies. Yeah, and everyone all gets that. infected, but it's like it's slightly different in the show than it is the game, from what I understand. Um, yeah. And mainly, I think they one of the reasons that I heard is that it doesn't come from spores anymore. Mm -hmm. That's how the virus spread in the game. Um, because they didn't want the main characters wearing masks all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so they're like, we have these these high-profile actors. We don't want to cover their face the whole time. <laughs> that makes sense. So they changed it so that it's more of like uh, you have to ingest it in order mm. to – or or get bit or whatever. Yeah, yeah. From that makes it. sense. So it's, it's similar to the game, but just a little different. Um, but uh, – it starts out pretty crazy. Like the very first scene of the show, mm -hmm. like they make it believable that this could happen. <laughs> like it, it's almost like a real broadcast. There's, they're talking about. You, lo this, you locked your doors after you watched it. Yeah. There's like this scientist who talks about like the potential of a fungus growing and taking over um, a human. And he's like, it can't now. Um, but he's like, what could make the fungus grow and and adapt to well, its the, needs in the future is the fungus if, was like it's a it's a real fungus right the, yeah like, so I can't remember what it's called it takes over uh, I think it like takes over ants or something like that yeah some kind of fungus let's that see it takes over small insects I don't oh yeah so of, ophiocordyceps mm. so that's like what the Fungus is based off of for the, the show and the game. Um, but like he was saying that that with the temperatures of the earth rising mm -hmm. um, and just the climate mm. changing, that caused the those fungus to mutate and adapt to their new circumstances. Yep. And he's like, currently they can only... Um, take over like bugs and smaller animals, but they don't need to take over humans yet. But that's why, like the progression of the show, it eventually um, shows that it takes over humans. Well, that yeah. So hmm, maybe it would if it took over humans. It would make them. It would make them more productive. Maybe. Yeah. That, Is that, that what would, happens to the ants? I don't know. I th yeah, I don't. I don't know exactly. I think the <laughs> ants just go back to the home, and the other colony they think that it's just an, one of their homies, and he infects them all, and they all just die out. A true zombie apocalypse for ants. Yeah. So well, shoot. I saw an article. It was like, it's probably just to promote the show, but it really, it was saying that the fungal threat to human health is growing in mm. warmer, wetter, sicker world. Interesting. So I'm sure that's a question that a lot of people have been asking since the show came out, that it's really popular. Mm -hmm. um, could fungus take over humans and have a, a zombie apocalypse like it does in the show? Well, that would be, uh, that would be terrible. I mean, I guess if it, if it happens to insects, it could mutate or change and happen to humans. Although, based on how it spread... Um, how you said it was spreading, all they really needed to do is buy a bunch of phone soaps and put them at the grain factory and just run the grain through the, uh, through the phone soaps and, uh, c and kill all the, the cordyceps on the, in the grain. Uh, you know, the so what a cordy does a cordyceps live inside or on top of? I don't know enough about it, but, um, you know, UVC does really well at killing, you know, not just bacteria and viruses, but also, you know, fungi. In fact, you know, UV radiation in general, um, you know, even from the sun and stuff is, of all of the, um, 
you know, it just does a, it does, it mutates mm -hmm. D DNA. So, um, you know, that's why if you're out side for too long you get either get a suntan or skin cancer depending on how how long you've been outside just because that mutation happens because mm -hmm. of the type of radiation that it is uvc which is what we use um in phone soap products is you know very specifically you know if, if you make it intense enough for bacteria and viruses you know and, and funguses it it's easier to get to the dna of the radiation gets to that that DNA and messes it up pretty badly, and, and in some cases, cases um, you know the the virus or the fungus is not able to recover. So, um, we actually have products, uh, you know, projects that we're working on with uh, potato farmers, where um, you know you pull uh, potatoes out of the ground and mm -hmm. um, they store them in these cellars, and you know, in the cellars, some if if some kind of bacteria or rot starts to grow, then it can infect the whole cellar and ruin the whole crop, right? Which yeah, is that expensive. Makes sense. So the idea is to like, uh, and they monitor for that to make sure that if there's any hot spots that develop in the center, they u they use like infrared um, to kind of see if any part of the cellars getting off temperature, getting getting hotter, and they know that there's something starting to grow, and then they they have to get to it before it destroys the whole the whole cellars worth of potatoes but if you can um you know kill any kind of bacteria or um or rot um before the potatoes go into the cellar then you you potentially save yourself a lot of money so um you know working with potato farmers right now and um at a university kind of um with using our phone soap express units that are um repurposed mm -hmm. to use on a conveyor belt. Um, you know, we've been getting some pretty awesome results as far as being able to disinfect potatoes before they go into the cellar. That's interesting. So maybe, maybe that's why I said, you know, you could avoid this whole future, uh, problem of, uh, cordyceps getting spread through, through grain. If you just apply something similar to, uh, to the grain silos that you do to the potato silos, maybe. Yeah. So as I, long I, as we're uh, as long as we're speculating, yeah. So I've I've seen uh, some videos of fungi or fungi, depending on your grammatical fungi preference. Fungi sounds more fun. <laughs> yeah, very true. Um, but uh, I've seen like the videos, and they do like really super close up of them, and show like the spores that just are constantly mm. just millions of spores just coming out constantly, and so like. So what you're saying is is the best way to stop them from spreading is to yeah. start from the beginning. Start from the beginning. You know, disrupt the uh, the DNA that um, you know. Once the DNA is screwed up enough, then it can't uh, function, you know, normally, and it also can't like reproduce or like grow or or spread. So, sa same way, if you were to look at um, if you were to apply UVC to bacteria and look at it under a microscope, it, um, you know, it looks like it's still there. It doesn't like explode the cell. It doesn't vaporize anything. It just mutates the uh, DNA to the point where it basically all the bacteria just died of instantaneous cancer. <laughs> they're there. You can see them, but they, they're not uh, doing anything. So interesting. So like what, what types of things would be necessary to have have a fungus or bacteria like grow to to be like unmanageable? Like what would what would happen happen to our environment? Mm, that's a good question. Um, you well, I mean, how they how the story is for the last of us, like at least in the game, it was, um, you do reach like this, this point where, um, actually probably saw the best example of this, like during COVID, right. You get to a point where you, I mean, you had lots of communities trying to like contain the spread of it. Mm -hmm. Like don't go, you know, don't go outside, stay in, stay indoors. Don't talk to anyone. Don't touch anything. And it just, um, it just found a way, you know? And yeah. so 
and at a certain point, you know, some governments in the world decided that, no, we're going to stay like locked down and other governments decided to not stay locked down. And the data is there for anyone to, um, you know, this has turned into kind of a political, a political topic, but the data is there for anyone to like review and inform their own, own opinions. But at a certain point, um, you know, it just got out of control and yeah. you either decide to, to live with it or, or keep trying to contain it. And so there is like this, this, uh, critical point. And so like, if this happened in real life, like it would happen kind of, I think like COVID and be like, and happen very quickly, you yeah. know, like you could try to, you could try to contain it maybe for a couple days, like, what was it like two weeks to stop the spread or whatever? Yeah. But, um, you know, getting humans to, to comply with that sort of thing seems impossible. It is very difficult because people have their lives that they need to live and it's yeah. hard to like stop them. And, uh, so I, so I think that, so I, so, so to your, to your question, like you have to stop it before it, um, it can get to that, to that point. Like you got to isolate, be actually be able to isolate a geography and know that you've isolated it because one person creeps out or creeps on that airplane. And that's very true. But I mean, uh, we saw that we saw, you know, COVID was, this is a global p t pandemic, you know, that we haven't seen anything like that, you know, ever. Yeah. And if one of these, this fungus was to be a thing, like who knows if, if yeah. it would be believed. And it makes, <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> it totally makes sense why there are people like watching the show and like freaking out a little bit about it because we all just went through. Yeah. Through COVID. Lots of people had, you know, lots of people died yeah. because of, uh, because of COVID and, um, lots of different theories about how to, um, like stop it or control it or mitigate it, et cetera, et cetera. So we saw lots of different governments try lots of different things. So we have actually have lots of data about like maybe what to, what to do and what not to do should something like this happen again. Because yeah. it just had never happened before, and mm -hmm. and the one obvious thing was that uh, like we just weren't prepared, <laughs> yeah, for it. And so th this article says that there's about four million different types of fungus, and uh, and only around like three hundred of them are are human uh, that are able to like in infect humans and mm. cause sickness. But um, yeah. Just, just definitely like stay clean. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna put this out on the airwaves. Is just, just uh, all you uh, grain and grain manufacturers, go ahead and give me a call. <laughs> we'll make sure that it's not your fault. That's true. You gotta take those extra precautions. <laughs> um, and yeah. But I mean, just like Jeff Goldblum said, life finds a way. Life finds a way. So now I got it. Now I want to watch the show. I played the game, but it's been it's been a while. So now I want to watch the show. You've intrigued me and and motivated it's, me. To it's do really that good, and it's Pedro Pascal. So there we go. That's probably another good Did, reason. Yeah, you he don't didn't want to put a wear. mask on him. Yeah, he's had he's done that already. He's worn a mask. He <laughs> needs to do something without a mask. Yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah, it's it's a great great show, and it's very interesting. Um, cool. I'm excited. Yeah. So that's uh, all we have for today. Um, okay. But we just like talking about these different health-related uh, topics. And if you have any suggestions, leave them down below.